What's going on everybody? Brian Tong here and Samsung. They just announced their new 2022 lineup at Samsung Unpacked. So that's their new foldables. You got the Z Fold 4, the Z Flip 4, the new Galaxy Watch 5 and Watch 5 Pro, and then the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. So there's a whole lot to talk about here. And these are gonna be all my reactions to Samsung Unpacked and we have to start with the foldables. Now I love what they're doing in this space because at first glance, you might think they look exactly the same as last year, but there are some changes physically that should really benefit the evolution of their foldables long term. So first up with the Z Fold 4, the dimensions of the product have actually changed so that it's shorter and wider when it's closed. And the Fold 4 now gets closer to resembling maybe a more standard phone when closed instead of this long skinny rectangle. It's not exactly there yet, but it's getting closer. I got to cover the Oppo Find N earlier this year, and I think it looks like they took a cue from them with just how much better that sizing feels in hand. And I'm just going to throw up the measurement comparison here on screen with the Z Fold 3 versus the Z Fold 4 when it's unfolded and folded so you can see the difference that I'm talking about. Now, you won't be able to see it as much, but there's also a new hinge that is slimmer and lighter on the Fold 4. Instead of being based on a new gear system, the new mechanism is a rotational hinge that makes the Fold lighter. Samsung also improved the display by removing the metal layer in the display and then strengthening the digitizer layer with a reinforced plastic. So this allows the display to be just as strong, according to Samsung, but also thinner and lighter. So these two unseen changes contribute to Fold 4 now weighing eight grams lighter. It's a 7.6 inch display, 120 hertz refresh rate. It's also three millimeters wider while reducing the size of the bezels for just slightly more screen real estate. Now the screen crease, it still doesn't bother me because when I've used it in the past, it's not, I don't do it in direct sunlight, but it doesn't appear that they've reduced that in this generation. And a lot of the changes with the Fold 4 are really, they're under the hood improvements. So you get the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 powering this device, and it also has an improved under display camera. Its main rear wide angle lens has been beefed up to 50 megapixels compared to the 12 megapixels found on the Fold 3. It also has an F1.8 aperture and a 10 megapixel telephoto lens with a 3X optical and 30X space zoom, so they've improved the cameras. The two main software changes are the fact that the Z Fold 4 now incorporates a dock for your favorite apps and recently used apps at the bottom of the display. It used to be on the side, but it definitely does feel kind of more, uh, I guess, desktop-ish in your hand because the dock's on the bottom. And then when it's in flex mode with certain apps, you can actually use the bottom half like a touchpad to move around. It's still compatible with the S Pen Fold Edition and S Pen Pro, and this is still a feature freak of nature. I mean, I don't think can think of any device that comes close. The Z Fold 4 is still gonna be something that your wallet though may not like starting at $1,799. It comes in three colors, gray green, which is one color, uh, phantom black and beige. And then there's an online exclusive burgundy color that I will not be getting. But there's still no product that does what this does. And ultimately this purchasing decision, it comes down to you. Now you do get a bump up in storage for twice the capacity at 512 gigs at that entry level price during the pre-order and it goes on sale August 26. Pre-orders are open right now. Now I'll be looking forward to getting my hands on this for review, but my first reactions are that, you know, there's incre incremental improvements and the design still looks very similar, but at that $17.99 price point, I just personally wish they could have at least incorporated their highest end wide camera with you got that 10x optical zoom that they have in the S22 Ultra into the Z Fold 4. I think if it's that high tier premiere of a product, yes, I understand the cost. I'd still like to see the highest tier camera inside. But this is still one of my favorite devices that continues to push the mobile space forward, even if it's incrementally doing it this year. All right, let's go to the Z Flip 4. The design, it also looks very similar. The design looks the same. Uh, the difference here is slight where it's barely smaller by less than a millimeter or two when you look at these folded and unfolded comparisons for the dimensions. The hinge is also smaller, but I just don't think I'd be able to really tell the difference in person in hand. Now, the display has slimmer bezels and it's made to be 45% stronger than a Z Flip 3 as well with a tougher armor aluminum frame. The cover screen is the same size with 1.9 inches and Gorilla Glass Victus to protect it. The 12 megapixel wide camera has been improved for better low light photography. You're also getting a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 processor inside with a larger battery at 3700 milliampere hours compared to the 3300 from the Flip 3. So there are a lot of incremental improvements here as well. Now it comes in four colors and you know I'm loving that Bora purple, but you also have the option to customize it with Samsung's bespoke editions, really kind of flavor it up. 
The Z Flip 4 starts at $999, and that's still the same entry-level price point as last year. You're also going to get double the storage at that price entry level when you pre-order. The Z Flip 4 is still the foldable that I've seen in the wild the most, and that sub $1,000 price point is always going to be a big reason why. But I ask people when they have it, when they see it, and they love it, but they also wish it had better cameras, so that improved low-light photography is going to help out here with the Z Flip 4. Now, Samsung is still hands down the leader in the foldable space, and we are four generations in now, but I really think for them to just really open up this category even more, you know, you hear the numbers that three times as many foldables were sold from this year compared to last year. I think it's about getting the price point down just a little more. I know to them and to many, this is a premium device. It's a unique experience, but even maybe another $100 down lower with the Z Flip or even 200 with the Z Fold lineup, I think just those small bumps will really open things up even more and then put your best cameras in them and I think you're gonna start to see even more traction. Now pre-orders are open now and they'll start shipping on August the 26th across the board with these products. So I'm excited to get my hands on these for a full review. I don't have them yet, but I will soon. Okay, let's get to the Galaxy Watch and if you know what your competitor is likely going to name their next smartwatch, beat them to the punch. Samsung announced both the new Galaxy Watch 5 and the new Galaxy Watch 5 Pro because it's pro. I mean, come on, what does that word even mean to tech companies anymore? It's gonna be their most durable, rugged watch and largest at 45 millimeters with a new sapphire crystal display that's twice as scratch resistant as the new standard display on the Galaxy Watch 5. You're gonna get the round industrial watch face that round watch fans will love and it's made of titanium and titanium is exclusive to the pro. It has the largest battery at 590 milliampere hours. It has LTE and Bluetooth. And there are different watch faces for outdoor workouts that appear to be just limited to just the pro. Also, there's an all new route workout experience with turn by turn directions and tracking back your route. Again, that is software, but only available on the pro. It comes in two colors, black titanium or gray titanium, and then it starts at $449. Plus, there's a special Watch 5 Pro Golf Edition that they didn't really get into, but I assume it's gonna have a golf app specific to it. Again, software, but only for the Pro Golf Edition. Now, the entire Galaxy Watch lineup is still packed with the most sensors on a watch to date. Check this out, right? You got heart rate, ECG, you got blood oxygen, body composition, and skin temperature for the first time. Now, that's a whole lot, and it brings sleep tracking using a variety of these sensors together to give you the measured data. Now the standard Galaxy Watch 5, that only comes in two sizes, 40 millimeter and 44 millimeters, and brings Sapphire Crystal to their watch for the first time. The difference between the Watch 5 and the Watch 5 Pro, well, the regular watch lineup has smaller watch faces, uh, smaller battery capacities, no titanium finishes, and the lack of any of the Pro workout or watch faces. But all the health sensors are exactly the same. Now the standard Galaxy Watch 5 starts at $279. It's available to pre-order now and also shipping. August 26th. And much like, you know, every brand and their smartwatch, it's made for you if you're in their specific ecosystem, but if you're outside of it, not so much. All right, to me now, maybe the sleeper product of Samsung Unpacked are the new Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. Design-wise, they're 15% smaller. They look similar with a matte finish. It's gonna offer a better ergonomic fit with the same IPX7 rating for water resistance. Now, Samsung's next generation of active noise canceling wireless earbud has been improved. You're getting three new mics to help eliminate 40% of the sound. They support 24-bit high-res audio for the first time, and this is a big deal if your music service supports this, but it's only gonna work when the earbuds are paired with specific Samsung Galaxy devices running the latest One UI 4.0 software or higher. Now, these earbuds also use Bluetooth 5.3, it's the first time we've seen this in a product for more efficiency while streaming, and they also teased that next generation Bluetooth audio is coming soon in the presentation. Plus, they're also bringing spatial audio and dynamic head tracking with enhanced 360 audio and Dolby Atmos support, and voice detect lowers the volume and switches to ambient mode when speaking. Now, battery life is gonna be similar to the previous Buds Pro. You get five hours of listening and up to 18 hours total with the charging case with noise canceling on. You turn off noise canceling and you're getting eight hours of listening with up to 29 hours total. Now they come in three colors and you know me, but who wouldn't want to match their phone with their earbuds? You got that Bora purple out there, but you can pre-order them now, $229 and they'll go on sale August 26th. But the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro are bringing some new features 
to the table for wireless earbuds that we haven't seen anywhere else yet. And I can't wait to check these out. But overall, when you look at Samsung Unpack, this is an incremental year for the foldables. But if you've been waiting to get one and you've been wanting to get one, I think that this is as refined of a product that we're gonna see from them until we get the next significant design change. The watch category still stands out. The best collection of health sensors on a smartwatch. And then the Buds 2 Pro bring the most innovation in its product category right now. So to me, this is another solid Samsung Unpacked. I'm really, really excited about the Buds 2 Pro and they continue to build this strong ecosystem of all these devices. I do want the prices to go down a little bit on the foldables, but there's also some big trading credits if you pre-order, so check those out online. But I'm looking forward to getting to review all the new Samsung hardware when I get them, and you can check them out right here on my channel. So those are my first take reactions. Nothing like blow your mind stuff, but a lot of really cool stuff. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. Take care, and I'll see you soon on the next video. Peace and love.